Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. From a young age, Anakin Skywalker was a daredevil and an excellent pilot. He won the famous Bunta Eve Classic Pot Race at the age of nine, a race so difficult that under 30% of the participants even finished. Pod racing was also considered so difficult that Anakin was the only human with fast enough reflexes to ever do it. Anakin would go on to be an excellent starfighter pilot for the Jedi and the Republic, and eventually the Empire. Anakin also was one of the most prolific crashers, and with tons of experience, he gained quite a lot of skill. Today, we're going to talk about his five most impressive crashes. At the age of nine, Anakin, like the children of war-torn Central Africa, got his first taste of warfare, which just goes to show you how crazy and messed up Qui-Gon Jinn was. Who tells a nine-year-old to go hide inside the cockpit of what basically is the Star Wars equivalent of an F-16? Anyway, young Anakin is dragged out into space thanks to the autopilot and is involved in a crazy dogfight where his side is hilariously outgunned. Luckily, Anakin had superb reflexes and instincts and quickly learned how to control his N1 starship, but the Naboo are outnumbered, something like 14 against a few thousand, and eventually Anakin takes a hit on the wing and goes into a dreaded death spiral. Most likely, the droids had severed some of his controls on the starship. For most pilots, this would be the end. But Anakin manages to aim for the open door of the Trade Federation freighter and recovers from the spiral and manages a really clean emergency crash landing. Especially when you consider that the N1 has no landing gear. Anakin launches a few proton torpedoes and detonates the entire ship, teaching us an important lesson that if you can't beat them, just go inside of them. Sometimes you're not in the right ship for the situation. That was the case when Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Ahsoka flew to Felucia to check on a missing medical station. Not expecting any trouble, they were in a T-6 Jedi shuttle, unarmed and unarmored. When six Vulture droids engaged them, some tricky flying from Anakin wasn't enough to prevent them from scoring a hit on the shuttle's plasma conduit, which cut off power to the engines. Anakin somehow manages to keep control of the ship and angles it in the right way so it doesn't burn up as it ends up Felucia's atmosphere, but unfortunately the ship is now in an uncontrollable dive towards the planet's surface, and a crash landing at this speed and angle is just not a good idea. The T-6 is too small to have escape pods, but it does have a very unique ejection system that shoots passengers into the air in giant padded balls. Luckily, the Jedi managed to hit a few giant fungi stocks as they came crashing down. Because Mythbusters tested this out and dropped the Zorb ball from like a thousand feet in the air, and there's no freaking way a human could survive an impact like that. Just one work. Ask a spacer during the Clone Wars era what their greatest fear is, and 90% of them would say a buzz droid. The other 10% would say space whales. Forget all that peaceful giant bull crap. Whales are dangerous and bloodthirsty beasts, especially when they get a taste for human flesh. Hashtag remember the Pequod. Anyway, why are buzz droids so feared? Well, most ships simply are helpless against them. Buzz droids are little droids that are usually launched in clusters by missiles. They cling on the surface of an enemy ship and basically begin dismantling the hull until the ship decompresses its atmosphere into space which is perhaps one of the most terrifying ways to die. Getting blown up by a proton torpedo is quick and probably painless, but watching a little droid quickly cut through your thin protective armor must be terrifying. When Ahsoka and Anakin are flying through the Battle of Kato Nomodia, Anakin hits a cloud of buzz droids. Between his force powers and R2-D2's little electro shock probe, they managed to get rid of most of the little pesky droids, or so they thought. One of the buzz droids strikes a critical component on the ship and sends a shockwave through it, knocking out Anakin. Ahsoka commands R2 to fly Anakin back to the destroyer, but upon closer inspection, the bottom of Anakin's fighter is swarming with buzz droids. The one logical course of action is to have R2-D2 crash land on top of them, which he does, luckily, before Ahsoka tries to do something completely idiotic like jump from her ship onto his. Look, I really like Ahsoka and all, but she is really stupid. Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand how she survived the war. So far, we've only talked about crashing small ships. And while crashing anything faster than 20 miles per hour is extremely terrifying, crashing a smaller ship is considerably easier than crashing a larger one. Especially when that large ship is the size of a city block and it's on fire and about to crash into a planet-wide city. These were the conditions surrounding Anakin Skywalker's attempt to control the Providence-class dreadnought Invisible Hand during its uncontrolled descent in the middle of the Battle of Coruscant. What made this particular crash even more daunting was the fact that not only were they about to crash into the most densely populated city in the galaxy, he also had Supreme Chancellor Palpatine on board. Unfortunately, this time around, Anakin couldn't control the angle of the ship as it came in contact with the atmosphere, and the superstructure of the Invisible Hand started failing, and the ship snaps in half. 
Luckily, the front half of the Dreadnought remains intact, and somehow Anakin was able to land the giant hulking front half of the ship safely in an unpopulated area. Just a few years ago, Anakin Skywalker took the Charleston, South Carolina Sheriff's Department on a crazy car chase. It went on for several miles, and Anakin started swerving all over the place until he finally lost control of his car, drove through a fence, and hit several trees. Apparently, his childhood skills as a pod racer had atrophied quite a lot by the time he was in his 20s. Okay, fine, that's, that's not actually canon. The real crash that I want to talk about is when Anakin crashes during the Battle of Ryloth. Facing the seasoned Separatist commander Martuk, Republic forces were outgunned and outmaneuvered. Down to just two Venator Star Destroyers, one of which was heavily damaged, Anakin decided to make a very bold maneuver. Under the guise of surrendering a ship and crew to the Separatists, Anakin was able to get the Venator-class Star Destroyer Defender close enough to the Separatist blockade that he was able to ram their main control ship. While attacking someone under the guise of surrendering is considered by most civilized people a war crime, it was also an extremely effective tactic that helped the Republic punch a hole through the Separatist blockade. Like most things in life, you should learn to crawl before you learn to crash into things at high speed. It takes not only skill, but bad decision making and risky maneuvers to be involved in a lot of crashes, and no one was better at doing that than Anakin Skywalker. It's almost a shame he didn't die doing what he loved most, ramming himself into other ships. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and like us on Facebook. As usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.